Hi everyone, welcome to our video. Today, we will be discussing the enigma surrounding conversion disorder. Have you ever experienced a problem with your brain or spinal cord? If you've ever had paralysis, seizures, loss of sensation, blindness, loss of speech, or unexplained pain or muscle weakness, then yes, you have. Now imagine if these neurological symptoms you felt couldn't be explained. What if your brain and spinal cord were working perfectly, and yet you were still experiencing these symptoms? That is what it is to have conversion disorder. Conversion disorder is characterized by the prevalence of neurological symptoms that can't be explained by any neurological disease or other medical condition. Although the cause is unknown, the condition is thought to be triggered by a reaction to stress or trauma. Errors in the way emotional information is processed by the brain can result in a physical manifestation of a psychological condition. The response is seen as a way to avoid further stress or trauma associated with the initial trigger. An example of this can be seen in World War I, where 10% of all shell shock patients were also diagnosed with conversion disorder. Symptoms included mutism and dissociative fugue, where individuals experienced reversible amnesia for personal identity, including memory. Conversion disorder cases have been recorded as far back as ancient Egypt, and up until the late 19th century, it was known as female hysteria, since it was believed to be exclusive to women. At the time, it was thought that patients were fabricating or exaggerating their symptoms. Conversion disorder was eventually coined by Sigmund Freud, who recognized the disorder as a conversion of emotions derived from painful experiences into physical symptoms. Freud's psychodynamic theory contributed significantly to the study of hysteria and paved the way for the idea of conversion symptoms. Though the mechanisms behind conversion disorder are poorly understood, Current research suggests that in conversion disorder patients, the emotional and physical circuits of the brain interfere with one another. Emotional stress is processed in the frontal cortex and limbic system of the brain. These emotional signaling pathways have been hypothesized to hinder the nerve circuits of the basal ganglia and thalamus of the brain. Since the basal ganglia and thalamus are important for sensation and movement within the body, such interferences cause problems with sensory and motor processing. Symptoms of conversion disorder have shown to range greatly with paralysis, seizures, blindness, hearing impairments, and loss of speech being among the most common. Diagnosis usually begins when symptoms become prevalent and individuals visit a hospital for treatment. After being assessed with a physical exam, it is discovered that they possess no neurological conditions. Usually, patients will then receive psychiatric evaluation and be assessed using the diagnostic criteria in the DSM-5, the Diagnostic Manual for Mental Disorders. The DSM-5 criteria for conversion disorder includes having one or more symptom that affects body movement or your senses, having symptoms that can't be explained by a neurological or medical condition or another mental disorder, and having symptoms that cause significant distress or problems in social, work, or other areas, or are significant enough that medical evaluation is recommended. Depending on the symptoms, there are many therapeutic and psychiatric treatment options available. Therapy can include occupational therapy to improve movement function and prevent complications, speech therapy, which is used to help those with speech or swallowing problems, and psychiatric treatment. Even though symptoms are not all in your head, emotions and the way you think about things can have a huge impact on recovery. The most common psychiatric treatment for conversion disorder is cognitive behavioral therapy, which helps correct inaccurate or negative thinking and manage stress. Anxiety, depression, and other mental disorders can worsen symptoms of conversion disorder, so it is helpful to receive treatment. 
Today, it is estimated that between 1 in 10,000 and 1 in 200 of the general population have conversion disorder. Conversion disorder doesn't discriminate by age as it is found across the spectrum. However, there are two to six times more female cases than males. Prognosis varies widely with some cases resolving in weeks and others enduring for years or even decades. There is no cure for conversion disorder and although patients may go into remission, they can relapse at any point. Furthermore, many patients who are cured continue to experience some degree of symptoms. From Egyptians to Freud to the 21st century, conversion disorder has been called many different names and been the subject of many different theories. As time goes on, we're increasing our understanding of the condition with the hope that one day we'll be able to completely rehabilitate all of those affected. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you gained a little bit of an understanding about the mysterious condition that is conversion disorder.